All right, what's good guys? Thanks so much for tuning in today. Been very busy recently, sorry for the lack of uploading, uh, but I wanted to post this video as um, a part B to my unboxing of the uh, Seven Artisans 4mm Ultra Super Duper crazy wide lens uh, that they sent out for me to have a bit of a play with and see what I could come up with. So um, really kind of taken back by this lens. It's not one that I would, uh, you know, sort of go out of my way or probably even if I saw it just online, I'd, I'd really think twice about. But after having used it uh, and kind of realizing uh, the, the way that this lens can open up the possibilities for your filmmaking or your, your creative storytelling uh, is a really cool thing. So um, I've got a few examples that I wanna run through today with it, which I think are kind of really good uh, examples of how you can use this lens. Um, and then we're gonna talk about um, the pros and the cons, uh, and then we're gonna answer the question, should you try and add this tiny little crazy super wide lens to your kit? So let's jump into it. So, uh, three of the tests that I tried to put this lens through was I tried to uh, do like a bit of a short narrative uh, piece where essentially I wanted to just use this lens um, and see if I could only using this one lens create like a little, you know, 15 second sort of narrative scene. Uh, and so I kind of played to its strengths. I thought, what you know, what is a scene that I could design that um, would allow me to do this, would, that would be interesting and would allow me to get multiple different shots. Uh, and so I decided to go with like a classic kind of like security cam shot, um, a doorbell sort of like peephole shot, um, and then just a few wide shots to kind of help the story carry on. And so here's what I produced uh, and tell me what you guys think down low. Uh, below of this little clip that we produced. I'll be there in a sec. So uh, just a little bit of fun there, uh, not nothing too serious, but um, yeah, really kind of taken back, particularly uh, with this lens on the Pocket 4K. So the uh, the mount that they sent out to me was a Micro Four Thirds mount, so I could only use it on the Pocket 4K. Now I've got a Fuji XT5, uh, which I was hoping to get a version of to use on that, and I also have um, several Canon EOS M's, which is kind of what this channel began with and kind of started on. So I was a bit bummed that I didn't get a, an FX mount or an FEFM mount for the Canon USM, but um, I actually think that this uh, kind of series of events leading me to use it on the Pocket 4K made me realize and understand the potential of this lens. So I'll get to that just a little bit later. But the next use case that I used this lens for was um, some time lapses in the car. So I set up the Pocket 4K, uh, this kind of, it's not so small, this camera, but kind of in the middle of my dash uh, on a little tripod and kind of drove around my neighborhood um, just as the sun was setting to try and get some sort of, you know, a nice uh, sort of time lapse, hyper lapse um, shots of, you know, driving and, and kind of motion and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I was actually pretty pleased with the results. So have a look at these. Um, yeah, and let me know what you think down below if you think this is a good example of a time lapse. And the last one I wanted to do was to go and get some of that classic like 1980s sort of like skateboard, uh, you know, film or VHSs that we grew up watching or that I grew up watching. Uh, and so I wanted to go into my local skate park. I had uh, the Pocket 4K, the 4mm lens, and I had a top handle and I actually brought a skateboard so I could kind of fit in, I fit in down there. Uh, I can kind of skate, but uh, definitely not like on pipes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I thought I'll get down there, I'll find someone that's shredding and just ask them if I can, uh, you know, film them. Uh, to my surprise, at like five o'clock on a sunny afternoon, there was zero people at the skate park. So uh, I ended up having to just skate around the skate park myself uh, to try and get some shots and it kind of didn't give me the use case scenario that I wanted. Uh, you know, I wanted to try and be next to an object or, or a performer on a skateboard doing tricks and kind of getting that really low angle fisheye sort of look. but. I had to settle for this. So um, this is just some shots of me skateboarding around the park. Very uh, average and very low par or subpar 
uh, skateboarding, but it kind of gives you a sense of you know what you could be using or what you could be doing with this stuff. So uh, these three t uh, use cases um, I thought was really interesting, particularly the narrative one, uh, and that's because of the crop modes that you can you put uh, your camera into with the Pocket 4K or the Canon EOS M. So this allowed me to get uh, several different types of shots. Uh, so using the full width of the sensor, uh, I was getting that kind of super, super duper peephole wide shot, um, which, which you might've seen in there. Um, and then punching into the uh, 2.8K mode, it, it kind of goes in a little bit more. So that kind of pulled um, the edges of that peephole sort of look kind of almost out to the, out, almost out to the edge of the frame. And then punching into the uh, full HD uh, version of the crop on the camera kind of allowed me to get rid of any sort of vignette or circle uh, and just have a fairly wide um, field of view there. So I'm going to put on the screen here because I can't recall the numbers with all the crops and everything like that, but in all the different modes, what the equivalent focal length uh, turns out to be with this lens. Um, but yeah, so using it in this way kind of really made me stop and think, hey, like this is a really versatile little lens. The fact that it's so wide um, is just kind of incredible. So I'll talk more about that later, but that was just a really interesting part that I wanted to share with you guys. So let's get to the build quality of the lens. Um, it is a classic Chinese manual focus lens. It's, it's made out of metal uh, and glass. It's built like a tank. It's, it's very small, it's very practical. Um, so I, I wouldn't have any sort of worries about buying this and it's not, not lasting the test of time uh, in terms of yeah, just being durable like that. All of the um, rings and dials and everything like that feel very smooth and kind of, um, it's a good mix of smooth but kind of like, uh, what's the word? Smooth but firm, uh, that's what I was looking for. So yeah, everything in that department, we always know the kind of build quality of the lens is the boring part of the lens review anyway. But something to note is that you can't use ND filters on this lens. It has a circular front element, um, so you cannot use or can't use any filters, uh, polarizing or anything like that. So that's something to note about it. In terms of sharpness, I didn't kind of get too pixel peepy into that. Uh, it's a super crazy wide lens. Um, you know, people who are going to be using it for the use cases that it's meant for, I don't think they're going to be super concerned about sharpness. That being said, it's not um, unsharp, uh, and because there's no uh, filter, you can't use filters on the front, you actually have to stop down the aperture. Um, so pretty much everything you shoot is, is sharp and in focus, which is really good. Um, so would I recommend this lens, okay? Uh, if I hadn't been given this lens to test, would I purchase it myself? Uh, that would probably depend. I would only probably buy this lens if I was uh, more of a narrative filmmaker and doing that a lot more. Um, I mainly do weddings uh, and kind of just basic commercial work uh, for like social media and stuff like that. So I don't know that um, I have a huge need for it at the moment, but uh, that being said, having it um, just as kind of like a backup or in your kit allows you to get that security cam looking shot or get that peephole shot or um, just get some fairly unique ultra wide shots um, that are pretty common and, and are actually pretty popular within um, you know some media these days for example Better Call Saul has some really good examples of ultra wide establishing shots that are just very unique because of the small form factor of the lens as well you could kind of get the camera into these strange positions um, so I guess bottom line is I would say Yes, buy this lens for two reasons. If you're a narrative filmmaker, I would say that this is just a great lens to have. It just gives you heaps of creative options. Uh, and secondly, if you have a camera that has multiple crop modes on it, so if you have a Pocket 4K or a Canon EOS M, um, or you know, there, there's several others, but those two um, are kind of the they have the most options in crop modes. Uh, I would recommend that for you because it allows you to you have one lens that gives you all these different types of looks. And normally cropping. Uh, with lenses on isn't ideal because kind of give you you know some nice looking separation and background bokeh and all that sort of stuff but with a wide lens you don't have that anyway so in that way I think using multiple crop modes on a lens it's actually the best lens to use it for um, so yeah that's kind of my breakdown of it uh, thanks to Seven Artisans for reaching out and letting me have a play around with it I really enjoyed that um, and yeah if you have any comments or questions about this lens or about how it works on the Pocket 4K uh, or anything like that, uh, please put it in the comments below. And I thank you for watching and have a great day.